Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 389. Adult attention deficit disorder might be an advantage in the 21st century. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. People my age, or close to it, (laughs) grew up in an era where this diagnosis didn't exist and medicine for treating it didn't exist. My era, too. Well, I wasn't going to say that. Thank you. But I'll take ownership for mine. Mm -hmm. So what happened for people my age is that when we were in school, and especially boys, we were identified as behavioral problems. We couldn't pay attention. We couldn't focus. We were thought to be not as bright or as sharp because we couldn't pay attention or focus, except that there were flashes, in my case of brilliance, admittedly, uh, that my teachers didn't know what to do with. They didn't know how to understand. So then they thought it was just my personality, that I was edgy and oppositional. Bad guy. Bad 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 student. And my parents. And that was what they used to say. Being the conservative Southern religious family that we were, (laughs) believed in the spoil the rod, spoil the spare the rod, spoil the Mm -hmm. child theory. So they beat the crap out of me because I (laughs) didn't do as well in school. Yeah. And they didn't want any phone calls coming home or notes coming home saying I had mm-hmm. misbehaved or I had an attitude problem. So my father was going to beat all that out of me. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn how to survive. And what I did is now called the development of compensatory strategies. I learned to read situations and focus in certain ways to be minimally successful, to survive in school without drawing all the negative lightning. Mm-hmm. That has translated into my adult life, into a skill set that has served me well. Right. Those skills still work for me. Well, I take care of patients. Not I'm not their counselor, but I take care of a lot of patients who uh, say they have ADD or ADHD, and they are doctors, lawyers, teachers, yes. counselors. They're very. Uh, I mean, it's it's. I have this. Yeah. It is really helpful <laughs> to have. ADD, actually I have ADHD, um, and to use that okay. for your energy. Can we take a minute to explain the difference? Okay. ADD is attention deficit disorder. They have uh, problems with focusing attention and paying attention for extended periods of time. And what happens in their head is they're sitting there and all this stuff's going through their brain. They may be sitting still, but everything is going through their brain and they, they, they can't focus on one thing. There's a lot of thoughts and none of them can focus. My son has this and was diagnosed most early and put on medicine for it. Mm-hmm. And what he says is that when he's not on the medicine, there's always noise in his head. Mm-hmm. It's like background noise mm-hmm. that, like, I don't know if people have ringing in their ear or they hear a buzzing or something and it interferes with their it's ability like to pay thoughts, attention. From what I understand from what they say. His description is it's just noise. noise. And if he's on the medicine and it's the right medicine, then he, he says, my brain is quiet mm-hmm. and I can do what I need to do. I can mm-hmm. focus on and I don't get distracted. I don't lose time. When he was a child, he used to lose time. He, he, one of the things you learn in working with families that have children with ADD is you learn that they cannot give global instructions. Go get ready for bed. They have to say sequenced steps that are or verifiable. They should say, they should Bre- say that if it's to make work. their child be able to get to bed in some reasonable hour. Well, but they break it into marker points. Mm-hmm. So they say, bring your backpack to the front door, mm-hmm. brush your teeth and come back. Right. And then the parents need to be aware that the kid didn't come back because the kid will go off to brush his teeth, spot a dust bunny in the floor, sit down to play with it. And an hour and a half later, will never brush his teeth and never come back. And if the parents have gotten busy doing other things, they suddenly get upset. They're like, what the hell happened? Yeah. You're in so much mad. trouble now. What I tell you to do? And the kid's like, 
I, I, I don't do remember. Wrong. I don't I know don't why you're mad at me. Yeah, and so they that's, don't know. But that's ADD. And that that's harder for me right. to tell that somebody has that because they're not moving all the time. Well, that's the ADHD. The hyperactive. The ADHD is constant okay. movement with this constant thought right. process. And your your body just can't stop. Right. So... Your teach so it is irritating to people. It is irritating to teachers. It is it seems like you're not paying attention or you're trying to distract somebody else on purpose when you don't even know you're doing it. I mean, I spent grade school kicking the desk and I mean I was in trouble for kicking the desk all the time. Yes. So I couldn't stop my feet from moving and mm-hmm. I still can't unless I concentrate on it. Right. And that was some that was one aspect of my way of getting rid of that energy so that I could concentrate, I would move something. Yeah, it's like opening another channel to drain out the excess energy. Like I, I play with one of these and mm-hmm. always have. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in school, I learned now not to tap it because I'd get in trouble for making the noise. But I'm rotating it, I'm playing it, I'm pointing with it, I'm mm-hmm. gesturing with it. And in doing therapy, I always have one of these in my hand when I'm mm-hmm. talking to people. When I'm teaching mm-hmm. school, I always have one in my hand. So, so that's a compensatory that's a strategy. Yes, it is. Yes. That would not be noticed. And would, not as much. Would go it's not as irritating. With society. The, the biggest issue is yeah. we always think of ADHD and ADD as, as people who aren't going to fit in society, which is wrong. <laughs> people who have this run society. It's just that they have learned how to channel their Strength. their energy. And nowadays, when things go so fast, when I was, when I was doing OB, I'm in the hallway talking about one patient. I've got another patient in, in the room. I've got a third patient that's calling me on the phone. I've got all these channels and all these different conversations. Right. Well, now the doctors have them all on their phone. They're all texting. They're getting texted from labor and delivery and surgery. And, and it, it was a, an advantage to be able to flip between these conversations and still keep them all going in my right. head. Right. So that was in that way, that was an advantage. Mm-hmm. It's an advantage for sales, for people to be able to move around and demonstrate things so that people can, will buy them because they are moving around. They're energetic. They're excited. They move their body that it makes it more interesting and they sell. Oh, we have so many clients that would come in and, and try to tell their story. Why are you here? This is what's going on in my life. And it was never a linear, consistent, concise That's how you knew what they story. <laughs> <laughs> but they would apologize. They're like, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around so much. Because they'd be like, oh, yeah, wait. You know, a, a classic joke in our culture is squirrel. Yeah. And everybody understands it. Yeah. And they all know we're talking about this issue. So I, I would just laugh and say, it's not a problem. I don't have any trouble following you around like a flea on a griddle. Mm-hmm. I, I will be able to put it all in perspective mm-hmm. and see the pattern because those are my skills. That's your, it's years of practice of having the same problem and being right. able to put all of those different thoughts into a collated idea. And that's, well, that's like you one of the things that tracking all these different patients and mm-hmm. different issues while you're trying to go in and do surgery and somebody's life could be at risk in this moment. You have to hyper-focus and take right. care of this. So the way you do you track in the background, so when you come right out, mm-hmm. I can then just, well, deal Jones, with all those things. Do this, take, you know. But it was the same thing about yeah. going into a room with Absolutely. a patient. I would block out everything but that patient. She had my total attention. Right. And I would, I would, and she would know I, she had my total attention. And I did not, I asked, unless it was an emergency, not to be disturbed because I didn't want to lose my my integration with her and my feeling that I could, I could figure out what was going on with the her. Hyper focus. That hyper focus. But you helped taught me. yourself that. Yes. Independently. No one taught you that no. was a good thing or a learned skill, mm-hmm. learnable skill. I didn't even know it was called hyper focus when I learned it. No, you don't. And then, yeah. And what was this called? Breathing. <laughs> you yeah. just do it. Right. And, and many of us did that. And many of us just did it. And so what we want to talk about today is there are things that you can do to recognize your own. When I was working with families that had ADD as an issue in their family, I would constantly tell those children, you are not broken. They're you're not. not bad and you're not broken. You learn differently. Your brain works differently, not badly. A psychiatrist so, who's a friend of mine said that we're all wired backwards. Yeah. And I don't know exactly what that means, but it means that we respond to medications the opposite of what other people respond. Like Benadryl, 
makes us stay awake instead of go to sleep. Right. And and ADD drugs are uppers for most people, but they're calming down agents for people with ADD. They're a little our chemistry in our brains a little different. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's worse than somebody else's chemistry. It just means it's different, and we have different. We're good at different things right. than people who can just sit down and listen. And, and understand. so without getting distracted and going somewhere else, trying to pay attention to what you're saying and remember what I wanted to say. Yes. The value in recognizing this is for you, the person that suffers with it or deals with somebody that suffers with it, to be able to understand that just labeling it good or bad, irritating, comforting, what have you, isn't helpful. What's helpful is being able to use it in a productive way. And that is what we call compensatory strategies. And there are a lot of different ones. There are things that you may have discovered, as Kathy was saying, she taught herself to study and to learn in this way, but didn't know that's what she was doing. There are things that we can suggest even now, if you're 40, 50, 60, if you struggle with this and being successful at what you want to be successful at, there are ways that you can make it more manageable and more productive for you. The first one that I would suggest to you still in this day and age timers go buy some egg timers you can put it on you your put phone them on your or... watch put them on your phone mm -hmm. set timers to go off because one of the chronic complaints is that when you get hyper focused or distracted either one you lose track of what you're doing you lose track of time you don't lose track of what you're doing you lose track of time you lose. You are very hyper focused on what you're doing. If you're hyper focused, right. If you're not hyper focused, if you're just there, it's literally like squirrel, 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 squirrel. Right. It's like being in a in a shooting gallery. So it helps you to have a timer to tell yes. you this is how long you have to work on this. So when I was in medical school, right, I hated sitting in the lab with all these very nervous other medical students that were very upset, and there was so much noise in my head, I couldn't concentrate. Right. I would be distracted all the time. So I would go home with my books and my notes and I would study for an hour on the nose, one hour of hyper-focusing studying. Then I'd go run or take a long walk. Excellent. Then I'd come back. Then I'd study for another hour. So, so you would do so like I would, anatomy for an hour and then right. go run and come back and do chemistry for an right. hour and go run and come back and do... Or even finish anatomy, but, but you know, but yeah. or finish pharmacology or... Right. But I, I could study if I broke it up by hours and I would... I always I made dinner in that hour, you know, because at that time I wasn't working. My husband was. So I'd go make dinner or I'd take a break and in between studying, I'd go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So I had an hour to go to the grocery store and I'd come back and I'd study. So even if it was vacuuming, it let me move around. Mm -hmm. But sitting for somebody who has ADHD is torture. It's just yeah, difficult it is because to they just can't sit. sit and they fidget, which for is for long periods of time. <clears throat> right. So, so that's what I I learned. Mm -hmm. I have another friend who's a surgeon, and he reads books right. on vacation, reads his book like this or on his iPad, and walks up and down the beach. It's how he concentrates. He has, yes. he has, and he's and, able to do that. And at home, he gets on the treadmill and right. he, he goes on the treadmill for a couple hours and then he's calmed his brain down and then right. he can do other things that are more calm. Yeah. So those are compensatory strategies. They're not bad ones. They're I, good. I used to read to escape. And I would read, I, when you read, my thinking mm -hmm. is you can go anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. And so I could go back in history or I could go out in space. I could go wherever. And that would remove me from the environment that I was in, which was a dangerous and difficult environment. Mm -hmm. My problem with attention deficit disorders, once I start reading, it's hard to come back because right. until the book is over. I mean, I'll right. sit there in the middle of a, of a hurricane and read the book and could do that and, and still often do. Mm -hmm. So using a timer, having a schedule as a way to say you must interrupt this mm -hmm. and come back and do something else mm -hmm. is a beneficial thing. And we learned that with Spencer, w w timers were critical because he would come home and say, I'm, oh, oh, my homework is overwhelming. I have too much to do. I can't do it all. Mm -hmm. And we're like, not that much. Just sit down and do it. So he'd sit down to do his homework. Two hours would have passed because he'd get distracted and be doodling and drawing and what have you. Mm -hmm. And he'd still be on his math. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, well, why haven't you finished your math? It's too much. I can't do it. So then we learned with him, we learned to use pieces of paper to cover all the math problems except one row. Right. Do this row. 
Just look at That's this. Brilliant. Don't look underneath. That's brilliant. And and he could do that row, and then we could move it down a row. But mm -hmm. what we also learned was after you've done a row, get up and go do something physical. Run around the house three times. Right. Come back in, sit down, do mm -hmm. another row, or do English for a while, and then come back and do math. So you learn to break it up. You learn to sequence it, and you learn to use timers. You don't time it because you don't track time. Well, but right. timers are critical. Like I could be in a room with a patient and I wouldn't know if I was there 15 minutes or if I was there five minutes or right. if I was there an hour. Yeah, you I mean, know. nurses would have to come knock on the door and say, you need to come out now. I mean, basically, I forgot. I couldn't tell. I, to this day, I can't tell when an hour has passed. Well, that's, that's, that's not, where we're different because to this day, you're after 30 very, years of counseling, yeah, you know I know exactly. when 55 minutes is I up. Know. I realize that, but and you trained yourself. Okay, you gotta to that. go home. Yeah. But that's but if you have to have lists to organize your day, like if you have a day that's not yeah, already organized, right. then you need to put a list together and and estimate how much time you think each thing is going to take, or you're not going to do anything that day. Right. You're just going to wander around the house and look at some television and read the paper, and and you are going to get done what you need to get done in your day off or your day at home where that's doing the dishes or the wash or something. The you one have question to I hate your day. is when somebody says to me, what'd you do today? Right. Because if I can't pull up my list and say, well, yeah. I did this, I did this, mm -hmm. I did this, I did this. I don't know the answer to that question. That means you need a list to start out with. I do. I and have to so, start with So one. we have a whole yeah. house of ADDers. We're always late. <laughs> oh, that's your list. No, that's We're always list. Li we always have lists. Yeah. If we don't have lists. We have a very disorganized day and things don't get done and people don't get called and stuff. So, so the lists really help all of us. Right. And, uh, especially if you're, if you're retired, you need to have a list of things that, you know, just like go to the store, you know, something that tells you what to do. Right. So th these are all strategies that I'm not saying this is instead of, of, uh, medicine because, I, I found out I had ADD at 40 when my hormones dropped and I was so tired I couldn't do the compensatory strategies so my my world kind of fell apart. I just I didn't have the energy to organize my day or organize my life. Yeah. So that's when I really figured out or a psychiatrist did that I had it and he he said you just you just got older and now you're too tired. So I, so I do take medicine and I think medicine really helps. Oh. And in some people, including me, it's, it's absolutely critical that you have the medicine or you can't organize everything you're doing. You're, you, well, I know we're talking about the think. other end of the spectrum. We're talking about adults who were not diagnosed mm -hmm. or misdiagnosed for years. But I want to say if you, if you have a child in your family and they are ADD or ADHD, I, I've had so many conversations with parents, particularly dads, that want to say, I don't want those teachers to medicate my child just so they can control him. Those teachers are lazy. The damage that is done to your child by not taking the medicine, which would help. And, and if it's the right medicine, you know right away. I mean, you try it for a week and you'll see a change immediately. But the damage that's done to them socially among their peers because they don't have social cue awareness because they're not aware of what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. And the damage that's done to them by adults who are supposed to care for them and about them disengaging because the kid is difficult or challenging or disruptive or whatever mm -hmm. and sending them nonverbal messages of unacceptability. That damage is going to have to be paid for someday mm -hmm. and, and your child will suffer. So get it out of your head that it's a medication that dumbs them down, that uh, stupefies them so they can sit it, and be controlled. It doesn't. And allow them to learn social cueing, situational awareness, and appropriate responses when they can make their mind work the way that it's supposed to work. And that's what the medicine does. So that's my pet hobby horse. With no, no, I, I agree. I agree fully with that. And I think that, um, I, th I also think that Schools are made for people without ADD. Schools are Schools meant are made for girls. They're made, yeah. But I'm a girl, well, and yeah, I, have I ADD. know. But you, but you still had a, the overarching social appropriateness that girls had. Yeah. That a lot of boys don't. A lot have. of boys don't have. Okay, yeah. so I had that at the advantage. Yeah. But still, I don't think they're really made for boys, and they're not really made for active kids. Which some active kids have ADHD, and some don't. But they're not made for thinking and walking. I call it. It's peripatetic learning where you're walking around and learning. Like when you go to the museum yeah. and they tell you about this artist or this sculptor or the, or the, the art museum and, and they, and they tell you what they did and when they lived and all those things, that's learning. 
I mean, that's a kind of learning that ADHDers can do. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something because they're walking around and they're learning as they go or, or learning as you do, learning to build things. That's a really good thing for an ADHD or, or learning to do computers. That's awesome because it takes a lot of their skills. So just because they haven't been successful at sitting still doesn't mean they're not brilliant. It just means that they have a different way of learning, but we all have to learn to be in social situations in our lives. And so the medicine is very helpful for being fitting in in school and fitting in is important and being able to have the social cueing for the rest of your life. So I believe that you have to learn to fit in, but you also have to have teachers should respect the fact that a kid isn't a sitter, a sitter. She, he, he, need, he or she needs to go out and do things with their hands. Teachers do, and schools do, because teachers don't have full control. No, they, over their they actually don't have very the much control. Things they're required to do in the day, but I, I think they do more now than they did 20, 30, 40 years ago. And, and I think all of these components are coming together. But what we are talking about is people our age who are critical of themselves, who are upset with themselves because they have this failing. Or who need medicine. we want to say it's not a failing. They still need it. They still might need it. Exactly. Check it out Mm -hmm. and see if you would benefit from it. But also recognize there are things that you can learn to do that support your ability to focus and problem solve and be successful, even if you have this issue. And it may be an advantage in the end. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.